Guys, you know, we've been together a lot. You know, there, and there's a lot of history in the room here. Uh, I think because of teams we played with, the 69 team, the 84 team, 89 team, when you look at it, a lot of history. The only thing I can look at as me as a pitcher to have five Hall of Famers on one team. Leo DeRocher, the manager, Billy left, Ronnie at third, Ernie at first, and myself as a pitcher. That ball club had five Hall of Famers on it, mm -hmm. the 69 team. Mm -hmm. uh, the 84 team, now you're looking at three Hall of Famers. Yes. You know, I'm not sure the 89 team, do they have any Hall of Famers on the 89 team? Andre wasn't 84, but he was, was 89. 89. Yeah. So, so Maddox, one. Maddox, Maddox two yeah. through three. Yeah. But you know, when it, it's hard to compare. It, it really but is. the only thing you look at is that you guys all played well together and won lots of ball games. Well, 89, I think we may have. When you talk about 69 and 84. 89 may have overachieved mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to a degree because we had a lot of young players that came and we had Jerome Walton, Dwight Smith who were one and two uh, in their rookie of the year voting. Maddox was young. Maddox was mm -hmm. young, yeah. And, Girardi was young. Right. So we, we made a run the second half of the season to position ourselves uh, to be able to make it to the postseason. And I, I just think those other two teams were better mm -hmm. uh, because for the simple reason, we played a little bit better than expected. No one really expected that out of the 89 team. But we went out there, uh, Zim let us go out and just enjoy ourselves, have fun. He, he didn't have an agenda. He didn't have rules. He just said, "Come through those two double doors, ready to play." I think we had four. I think we yeah. had four guys in '89 over 30 years old. Yourself, myself, Sutcliffe, and Scott Sanderson. Sanderson. We were the four veterans on the team, and all of a sudden, all these guys came up to the minor leagues. And before you know it, we had a good little thing going. And Zim was a great manager, putting everything on: bases loaded, hit and runs, first and second, no outs, hit and runs. <laughs> Everything, uh, everything was going. Yeah, with the bases loaded, hit and run. With I think it was Manny Trio. Man, so he put was the hit and run. Team? He put the hit and run on me, with me on third base. <laughs> I think the Manny hit, Trio was a hitter. The so he hit was and run. Veteran guy. I think. I think. Uh, you know, you, it's tough to measure what team was the best at those those particular times. Uh, the only thing I could uh, look at is that. On the 69 ball club, Fergie mentioned it, we had uh, five guys that go in the Hall of Fame. But I think the one thing, the consistency, we were together for many years, and we normally put guys on the, uh, the All-Star game every year. You know, we had several guys, we, were, we had different positions that we were strong at. If I have to say there was a club that stood out among the, 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 the baseball teams was the 69 club. I don't like to say that, but we had several players that had a position that they played every day and they were all-star players, plus they were Hall of Fame players. And uh, I don't think it's measured <coughs> by the games that you won that particular year. Although I don't like to talk about losing, but we were an exciting ball club. We were, we were tough and we played well. And uh, we had the great pitching. We had yeah, the Kenny, great Kenny catcher. won 17 games that year. Bill Hammonds won 20 games. games. Yeah. You know? we, had, we had everything a baseball team needed. You know what? The 84 team, I witnessed something that, uh, that really I'll never forget, and that was a team put together as the season went on, mm -hmm. uh, yes. but our starting pitching, Sutcliffe, Eckersley, uh, Trout, Sanderson, and Dick Ruthman, we had big league coming in. We had a good, good bullpen. Uh, they brought over Ron Say, and uh, then we had a veteran guy at short that had been there before, but it was the guys that Dallas Green brought over that had done it before elsewhere mm -hmm. to come in with that experience. But uh, I batted second. And so the number two hitter through the number seven hitter all had over 80 RBI. 
Bob Dernier led off, stole all the bases, scored a ton of runs. Uh, Larry Boa batted eighth. Um, he did the little things. Uh, but we had we had we had six guys with over 80 ribbies. We were putting numbers up, uh, yes. going out of style, mm -hmm. and uh, and I just witnessed the Cub fans <coughs> coming out of the woodwork mm. <laughs> that year. <laughs> Harry yeah. Carey, Steve Stone on WGN. It, it was a big deal. It yeah. was, and I witnessed yeah. that for the first time. I was 24 years old. Yeah. Um, it's the first time I saw uh, in September people on the rooftop. Uh, yeah. watching the game and that's because you couldn't get a ticket anymore <laughs> we started that in 69 <laughs> did you okay yeah <laughs> no no 69 we drew a million six hundred thousand people to come to the ballpark and and because i think because of the uh the cable network mm -hmm. a lot of people began to follow the cubs at, at that WGN time. was WGN a popular WGN station, popular back station at that time. oh we had the fans meeting our buses in la and in montreal and in new yeah. york and Two in the morning, we get in, and all of a sudden, there's Cub fans. That did, I didn't see that in 82 and 83. Yeah, it was, and it, it was it exciting was, it was, for you guys. Yeah, I, it was exciting. I remember coming to the game. One game short. Yeah. After a 2-0 two, two lead in, a, in the best of five, one game short of going to the World Series. Yeah. Uh, I still think we were the better team yeah. than the Padres, but they beat us with the yeah. home field advantage, used, and, yeah, used, and that was it. You know, we had a great time to see you guys have the year that you guys had that year. You know, Rhino, Rhino had put it to that point that the guys were like put together, like after Sutcliffe came over, you know, but we were starting to get that even from spring training because if you remember that team that we had in 1983 from spring training, mm -hmm. I think we might have won two games in spring training and we were like, oh man, what are we going to do now? Mm -hmm. and, then, and then we get, you know, we started getting like Rhino and Mo and all those guys mm -hmm. over, but, but Myself and Rhino, we were like 23, 24 years old at that yep. time in yeah. 84. Yeah. Yeah. First time I yeah. witnessed winning at the yeah. major league level. Yeah. In 84? Yeah, yeah. 84. Yeah. And that became a new goal. Because you got Jody and Davis out here too. Yeah. Jody came over from Atlanta or the Cardinals, Jody Davis? Uh, Jody came in 82. Yeah, yeah. He, was, yeah. he came yeah. in 82. Yeah. Yes. The biggest thing about the 84 team, I think, out of, out of spring training was uh, they traded for Gary Matthews and Bob mm -hmm. Dernier yes. with mm -hmm. three yeah. ga three days left in spring training. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And those two guys, a leadoff and hitter and a three-hole hitter. You traded Joe hitter. Carter also. Joe sure. Carter, yeah. uh, Mel Hall. Joe yeah. Carter, yeah. Mel yeah. Hall. Yeah. They, for, they for were traded to yeah. Oakland because they were, I was there when they came to Oakland. But the, uh, but but the leadoff the leadoff hitter Bobby Denier yeah, and yeah. you the Daily Devil I think they was used to call you guys it was exciting it was exciting we we didn't hit and run too much no. we bummed it <laughs> yeah. We, yeah, yeah, Hickman we, was a great clutch hitter Jimmy yeah oh yeah, yeah. he could hit yeah. Ronnie I mean there were so many guys that in that lineup. They had to give, the other team had to give you guys respect. Oh, yeah. And that's sure why we did. stayed yeah. in first place almost five and a half months.